going on, everybody? Welcome to the Game Informer Show, a weekly podcast covering the video game industry. Join us every Thursday for a discussion about the latest gaming news, reviews, and exclusive reveals alongside Game Informer staff and special guests from around the industry. I'm your host today, Alex Van Aken, and I'm joined by Wesley LeBlanc, the oh. news hound himself, the once Hello. and future informer. Hey, Wes. Hi. Sorry, I was trying to like hype myself up and then... <laughs> yeah, I realized I, I was right. going and you were just holding that note. <laughs> you're being a spooky My lungs aren't very good. I have asthma, so that note was only going to last like four seconds max. Um, yeah, but I'm glad no, I got it out. Great. Hello, I thought everyone. you were doing like a ghost of Christmas past or something. Yeah, <laughs> that actually is what I was doing. Yeah, that's... that's... <laughs> I like that Wes just has like chains laying around his office as a prop. <laughs> Wesley <laughs> Marley LeBlanc. Arises. <laughs> uh, that voice you're hearing is Kyle Hilliard. Hello, Kyle. I am a living human. Uh, I breathe. I have dreams. Not a ghost. Whoa. Confirmed. Do you do you dream often? Uh, realistically, not. No, not much lately. I've hit a point now in my life where I. The, I wake up before the alarm. You know, the alarm has to interrupt your. Oh dreams. no, I was talking about like aspirations. You know. Oh, you still have. No, I'm good. I've hit all the goals. <laughs> Same <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah. Plateaued. I just sleep through it all. <laughs> um, hello, Marcus Stewart. How are you? I'm doing great. I like to think I'm the the ghost of Christmas future. This is the uh, the future of Christmas. You're hearing it right now. Me, I'm the new Santa. What does 2023 entail for us? ghost of christmas future well unfortunately most of the planet will probably be underwater um mm. which i guess is good news for me as santa because it's less houses i have to visit that's um, dark yeah, santa yeah and i can also bring most people the same thing which will probably be like a life preserver <laughs> i was gonna say like a, a buoy is twitter how's twitter doing uh there is it gone at this point are we done with it yeah you won't believe what replaces twitter <laughs> Okay, but, all right. Yeah, it's going to be wild. <laughs> Strap in. Uh, is it Web3? You nailed it. <laughs> you saw uh, over the weekend, uh, MySpace Tom poked his head yes. up. And yeah. Console. For the first time in a year. Yeah. The last time he tweeted was like a year ago. And then he shows up when, and is in Elon's mention suddenly. He might be my like new role model for like rich people of like, he made his money and then just like completely just fell off the face of the earth to go yeah. live his life. And I think that's and now he might want a little more money. And so he's like, hey, what's up? Yeah. I'm here. It's like, that's exactly what happens to Twitter if MySpace Tom takes over. Do we get profile songs? I hope. Do you think the top eight hierarchy, like he replaces the verification with the top eight, brings it back? Oh, <laughs> that, that would be pretty great, actually. <laughs> That's I logged into I my MySpace that. account when everything started collapsing, and it's still it's still there. I had to change my password to get in and stuff, but I was like, "Mine's long gone, mine... not by choice." Oh, okay. I don't know if I'd be able to get into mine if I wanted to. Yeah, mine right. is... you might have different email or something. Yeah, I know mine's still there, and I logged into it probably two, three years ago. But I've logged. I think I do that every two or three years. It's like, oh, I wonder if that's still like a thing I can access and. Every time it's still there. But yeah, I mean, this is just this is just a sneaky way to get plugs out of the way. Follow Marcus and I on MySpace. We'll throw you on our top eight. <laughs> if yes. I get an email that says like new friend notification on MySpace, <laughs> <laughs> that's very funny. I got lost in the transition from old old MySpace to like 2010 MySpace. Remember when like I th- it must have been when he sold it because it kind of like became less message board looking. And more like, you know, they had like the glossy look. And sometime during that transition, I think you had to log in to keep your account or something. I Is don't that know. when he kind of, because it really started steering towards like music stuff. Yeah. It, you know, yeah. it was almost like your profile was just like a Spotify page, basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, sometime around then, I, I like somehow my account got deleted or lost or something. I miss my, so, my list it's gone. that told you everything you need to know about me without having to speak to you. Oh, remember the surveys that you could yeah. do? Like the little... Yeah. Dude, good, remember good just the third market? market? appreciation, I love it. <laughs> yeah. I've, al- I've often wondered, like, how many people lost their money. Because remember, there was, like, a whole third market, like, scene for, like, those profile backgrounds of, like... The themes. Yeah, like, I would spend way too much time being, like, I need to find the perfect Dragon Ball theme 
for my background and typing into HTML code. <laughs> Those designers are still in business. They're working for the PlayStation Network store. <laughs> <laughs> well, they must be hurt now because we lost that too. <laughs> okay. I'm... Yeah, and their, their style hasn't been updated in, in a decade. All right, I'm logging um, in. So myspace.com slash Kyle ADS is my account. Uh, that's oh, like man. my old band. I'm uh, going to post right now. Excited to get back into MySpace. <laughs> okay, Glad you found these. me from the GI show. Have you ever updated Perfect. your photo? Like, is it still like... I can't. It doesn't work anymore. So it's still circa you from whatever you last... No, it's just a dead image. It just doesn't work and I can't oh, change it. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. So the site's like, it's like defunct? You can't I... update... Dang. It kind of works. Wild. I don't know. It's very weird. Yeah. Just frozen in time. Um, well, let's get into the show. Welcome everybody to the Game Informer show. Um, this is the holiday special. What does that mean? It means it's largely going to be unscripted. I have like two things I want to talk about, and it's probably going to be a little shorter than usual. Do we have like caroling we were... music we can play? Um, you know what? Trigger that right now. All right. Um, well, thanks for making this edit more complicated, Marcus. <laughs> that is my gift to you this holiday. <laughs> yeah, Marcus It'll is work. currently dancing to the, to the jingle it's playing. Oh, it's snowing. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll have to log into our sound library and send it to Matt. Um, but yeah, wow. Listen to this jingle right here. I hope it's like copyright it, free, so it's not. Isn't it so lovely? It to be. <laughs> I hope it's yeah. Mariah Carey. No, it definitely won't be. She is not <laughs> in the Epidemic Sound Library. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I figured we would talk today about kind of what we have planned for the break, uh, if there are any games that uh, we're hoping to beat over the holiday. Last year, I beat Bloodborne for the first time during the holiday break, uh, and this year I've got a similar mission to beat a larger game. Um, so we'll get into that. we got some listener questions, uh, and we'll just generally have a nice, cozy time. This is, again, pre-recorded. Uh, we're recording this on the 21st. I'm about to hop on a plane. I have to leave in two and a half hours. So uh, let's get this show on the road. Marcus, what's your what's your holiday to-do list this year? Do you have one or are you just kind of hanging back and, and vibing? In terms of like video games? Yeah, sure. Or you know, grocery shopping. You know, what what's going on in the world of Marcus? Um, I'm gonna be traveling down south this weekend. Gonna shack up at my parents' place. And then on Christmas Day, go further south to uh, my family. That- How, you're already in Florida. How much yeah. farther south can you go? Well, so I live in Orlando, which is central Florida. <laughs> okay. And then my family okay. lives about two hours south, or like my mom and my stepdad. And then most of my other family lives like in West Palm Beach, which is uh, where I'm originally from. And so going to be doing a lot of that, I guess, driving. So that'll be fun. I'll probably bring my Switch with me. I'm only going to be up there for or down there for the weekend, but I'm going to play some... Uh, I got Xenoblade Chronicles 3 recently. I am gonna. I started playing a bit of that to see what the hype is about. I've only ever played the first Xenoblade, but I really like it. And yeah, I I want to see where this one goes. But um, also got uh, Chained Echoes, which I don't think we've had a chance to talk about on the GI show No, yet. we haven't. But I'm early in that as well. I'm digging it so far. I like the presentation. It plays nice. I, I I need to play more before I can kind of confidently give any sort of like in-depth discussion about it. But I'm enjoying it so far. So it's off to a good start. Can I can I ask you chained awesome. chained memories is what it's called, right? Chained echoes. Chained echoes. And that's the Xbox, that's the um Game Pass like throwback kind of looks like a 16-bit rpg a little bit right yeah i forgot it's on xbox i'm playing it on switch but yeah okay. yeah it's on game oh, Pass that too. seems like a good switch game it had been uh kicking around for a while and just came out but yeah it's pretty much just like a love letter to 16-bit jrpgs well i i had a question because there's like a secret thing i i really love that era of rpg right like it's mm-hmm. it's I, the Chrono Triggers, the, you know, I would I would put Golden Sun kind of in that grouping, you know? And, like, one of the things I love about, like, those two games in particular is, like, despite it being turn-based, the combat is, is actually quite fast, and you can, like, select your attacks very quickly. Mm-hmm. And does Chained Echoes kind of feel like that? Does it feel like it has a good pace in the combat, or does everything kind of slow to a crawl when it's time to fight? Uh, It feels like it's got a good pace. Okay. Uh, I've never played Golden Sun, believe it or not. Missing out. Uh, so I can't compare it to that, but it's definitely faster than I'd say a lot of uh, the average 
old school RPG from what I've played so far. Okay. Like I'm enjoying the pace. And it was weird as it sounds, I'm also enjoying just the movement pace of just walking around. Like your character really moves. And I kind of like that they don't move slowly because it just makes navigation more fun and less yeah, you're, you're speaking my language here this this sounds i might have to check it this out yeah yeah like i said game pass download give it a shot i like i said, I, I and it's been getting a lot of buzz too like i've been yeah. seeing people that are much deeper and saying it, it only gets better as it it's goes. a small team i think making that the game too yeah that's going to be one i I'm definitely want to spend more time with but overall i have like a laundry list of stuff like i still haven't finished god of war i gotta finish midnight i haven't even started it oh you never started <laughs> wow. It? oh wow that's that's my plan for the holiday i think okay um is finally starting that because i it was uh what we were in now that we can talk about it we were in england for the dead island 2 cover trip we got back and it was the week of uh, my wife's birthday then we went back home for the holidays and it was my birthday uh and then it's just been it's been a gauntlet of for the holidays leading up to break and i didn't want to like I was too busy, I think, to devote a full 30 hours or whatever to beating God of War. So I was like, I'm just going to wait till It's till 30 I hours a, if you're lucky, chance. if you really mainline it. Oh, really? I'm yeah. 25 hours in, and the story is, from what I can tell, nowhere close to being finished. But I'm, I'm trying to take my time. I, would, I want to do the side stuff because uh, there's a lot of good stuff in there. And also reading your review, Kyle, hearing you talk about some of the best sort of character stuff is in the side stuff. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole... I, I there's a whole like gigant not to scare anyone away but there's a whole gigant the biggest area in the whole game is associated with a side quest like it's this really dense open area that you can just totally miss um I didn't even go explore it until after I beat the game so like yeah the the side stuff is is crazy and worth pursuing in God of War absolutely I laughed out loud a few times at that area because of it, just the way that it continued to open up. I was like, <laughs> yeah. okay, here we go. And then more stuff, and I'm like, it just, it's mind-blowing. It's it's huge. Yeah. But anyway, it's fun. I wonder if I found that yet. I Maybe not. I, I don't I don't want you guys to say, but now I'm wondering, like, have I, have I visited this yet? <laughs> you have to follow, Wesley, please help me here. It's like a pig, right? Like, you have to follow its footsteps. If that doesn't sound familiar. Okay, then... yeah, no pigs yet. Okay. Pigless game Truffle so pig. Far. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's Kratos goes truffle hunting with the truffle. But it is, yeah. it is wild because it feels so side questy. It's like, oh, hey, go follow those footprints. And then you're like, oh, my God, what did I find? Yeah. Jesus. I played it like I beat, I would do all the side stuff in an area, like in a realm before moving on to the next main path in a different area. And that area, I probably put six, seven hours in of side stuff before finally moving on. I don't know if I'd recommend doing that necessarily. Like maybe just kind of play with it and see how you feel, but yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. Okay, but but hear me out. What if I played The Witcher Three next gen instead? I mean, have you played The Witcher Three already? No, I haven't. Oh, interesting. I mean, you're definitely unless you lock yourself in a room and interact with no one that you die. You won't not finish that <laughs> in the time that we have. For, okay, fair. For break, yeah. that is a. So I should stick with God of War, is what you're saying. You definitely cannot do both. It's one or the other. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, when I was a, I was an intern at GI when Witcher Three was out in 2015, and I was trying to play that Metal Gear Solid Five Phantom Pain, oh and then God. eventually Fallout Four launched when I was there. It was trying <laughs> to play all four of those at the same time, and that quickly became a like, wow, that just isn't feasible. So I had to. Which are, I think Metal Gear I was the furthest in, so I just I was like, gonna say who won from that three because like Metal Gear totally kicked those other two like out of bed like no problem for me <laughs> I never <laughs> finished those other two but Metal Gear I played I mean, a ton only one game lets you call in a helicopter that has man eater playing exactly you know? but, yeah um, Witcher I, weird that part of the game I, I <laughs> surprised it really comes out of nowhere <laughs> just, it comes out of Roach's mouth he starts singing it yeah. <laughs> That's but awesome. I did finish what? all three of them while I were there. So. Jeez. Workhorse, Jeez, man. Wow. Killing it. I was trying to prove it. I was like, hey, guys, I, I play games, too, you know? He's like, nobody disputed that. Wait to play games. <laughs> playing games. I, I know you guys already picked me for this position, but I'm just saying. You, know? <laughs> you made the right choice. <laughs> Wes, what are your holiday plans? 
like every Christmas for the past four years, I'm asking Santa for a 60 FPS patch on Bloodborne. And no. I'm hoping that he comes through this year. And if so, that's what I'm going to be playing. But in the very likely event that doesn't happen, I'm going to be playing... I'm just going to be kind of dipping around into a bunch of stuff. I need to play more Midnight Suns. I'm playing Signalis. I need to finish Norco. Um, probably play more of the new chapter of Fortnite because it's very good and all my friends are way farther in the battle pass than me. What level are you at? Oh, like 22. I think I've played a night or two maybe. Okay. Yeah, and then I just had travel and other games and stuff. And um, yeah, I think I'm going to play around with my uh, Steam Deck a bit more too. I've got... I have like three Christmases to do just because my wife's parents are divorced. So handy little gaming devices like the Steam Deck are great for the long family days. Do you ever rank your Christmases? Yeah. Every year. Yeah, <laughs> it's like how we, whenever we get back home, we do that. And then we sacrifice the part of the family that failed us the most. <laughs> wow. It's intense. I mean, that's the only way to ensure that the following. That Christmas... doesn't seem very sustainable, Wes. <laughs> So no, it's, do that yeah. A few times. yeah, I think like three years max, but it'll be worth it in the end. New, a new tradition. Yeah. Is what you're I mean, you just have to keep getting more parents. Or you make them choose who gets sacrificed. It's like, yeah, it's one of you has to go because <laughs> this we got to turn this into a party next year. So we'll let you decide who is getting the, I guess, I was going to say proverbial axe, but maybe it's a literal axe in this case. I don't know. This is a Blumhouse movie in the making. Well, that's cool. I, um... I relate to the three Christmases. I've got uh, one, two, three. I used to have four. Luckily, I only have three now. So you sacrifice it's always. One. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, was, they were consistently, you know, like y'all. This ham is very overcooked year after year. Something's got to give, um, and it turned out being their life that had to give. Mm. Uh, so yeah, three Christmases now, and two of those are mine. So it's always like a weird, we call it our custody schedule. Um, and at first, I don't think our family really liked that. So we thought it was really funny. And also my family is separated. So like it kind of works for me. So yeah, we figured out our custody schedule and it's always weird because it's like, okay, we really want to make these like as even as possible. But I've got like two families to see. Kayla has one. So it's, I feel pretty good about it this year. You know, Kayla's getting her half and then we're kind of being creative with my side of the family so that. You know, it's still equal. Kayla gets her half. I get my half. And mine's just a little like, okay, we're going here this day, here this day. And it's, it'll be fun. It'll be, it'll be fine. Uh, I'm starting to think maybe I won't have time to play any games at all. The more I think about the logistics of the trip, but you know, that's a problem for future Alex. Uh, Kyle, what are your plans for, for the holidays? Uh, I, nothing. I'm staying home. I, I have a, a, a kid, so I don't have, I, People got to come to me if they want to do Christmas. Nice. <laughs> you know? That's awesome. Uh, so I got all the time in the world to play video games. I'm sure I'll fill it with other stuff, though, because that's how it always happens. Roblox? Uh, yeah, she plays a lot of Roblox, the kid. Um, yeah, that's her main thing. I've been trying to get her to get back into Fortnite again the past couple days. Where I'm like, hey, you, and she loves my hero. She has like all the manga oh. and stuff like that. But uh, So I'm like, hey, we should we should play together. And she's like... No, nah, I don't want to. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna play without you. So, but I mean, I in terms of like video game plans, I made the mistake of starting Xenoblade uh, last week, which and and I've actually it it's got its hooks into me so far, which I'm like didn't really expect, was kind of surprised about, but like I'm I'm playing a lot of Xenoblade, and that's a big game. It's it's one of those that like honestly, I still don't know if I'm gonna finish right. It's like I'm something like, you know, six or seven hours in. The, the story has picked up multiple times. You know, there's been multiple, mm. like, quote-unquote, like, twists. And I'm like, oh, what's going to happen next? But I still am not fully confident that I'm going to finish it, really. And then I'm, I'm curious about Chained Echoes now. I want to give that a shot. I imagine that can't be as long as Xenoblade. It'd be weird to take a Xenoblade break to play a full <laughs> another <laughs> RPG. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have those like hour-long cutscenes that Xenoblade has. Or at least right. That yeah. first, the first two, I was like, "Are they all like this?" Because like, I feel like I haven't touched the controller in forever. <laughs> Gosh, I literally like if I think because I stopped playing last night, and I think I literally just turned off the screen in the middle of a cutscene. So I think when I turn it back on, I'll just you know I'm not. I wasn't even like I paused <laughs> and saved. I was like, you know what? Let's just we'll just put a pin in this, and I'll come back to this later. Uh, so that's where I'm at with that. And then also. 
last night, which I, I don't know if you guys do this, I before I even start playing a Switch game, I'll usually just look at the store and just kind of say, like, oh, it's new, you know, because the Switch yeah. store is so weird. And uh, they had this game called uh, Pick Ross X Pick Bits versus Uzboros. Uzboros? And that's from I, I'm like a huge Picross fan. I don't know how you guys feel about Picross. I don't know if you've ever Never touched Picross. I love Picross. Okay, yeah, just a very like if you're unfamiliar, it's like a kind of it's almost like Sudoku is like the closest sort of like family member. It's it's not okay. it's different, right? The rules are different, but I think it scratches the same itch of it's like a, a math based logic puzzle. And this game, this Pick Bits versus Uzboros game, is basically high speed Picross. It's like you, instead of having these big grids that you take a long time to figure out and solve, it throws a series of small grids at you, and you have to solve them as quickly as possible. And um, and then like if you do well, it culminates in this like um, it looks almost like Patapon. You guys remember that rhythm strategy yeah. game? Yeah. You like you you earn like points by solving Picross puzzles really quickly to like enable a Patapon fight. And if you do well, you win. And if you don't do well, you lose. And it's 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 dangerous. Like, and it's from Jupiter. It's from Nintendo's Picross team. It's not just like some. There's a lot of like weird Picross imitators on the Switch store, but uh, this is like you know like official quote unquote. I guess you could say. And uh, I played that for like about an. Hour. I downloaded the demo, and I was it was one of those situations where I was like, well. I gotta buy this. Like, this isn't even a question here. I, I don't even know why I wasted time with the demo. Like, just, I should have just ripped off the Band-Aid right away. Um, but you can transfer your save progress, which is nice. So that, I think, is just gonna be one of those things that it's probably gonna get its hooks into me, and it's like, I'm gonna go sit down and play Xenoblade, and it's like, well, or I could play this Picross X game for 20 uh, minutes, and that turns into two hours. <laughs> you know, I'm just worried that that's gonna happen. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm not ready to commit to like, oh, you know, this is one of the, my favorite games of the year. But I will say, because I love Picross so much, it did make me pause for a moment and be like, ooh, should I have... Should, should I have to write an editor's pick for this? Yeah, like, should this have <laughs> been in the running? I mean, it literally came out like a day or two ago, so it's like really coming under the wire. But like, if, if you like Picross, and if you like in particular, like, solving the smaller Picross puzzles very quickly, man, I would take a look. Uh, Pick Ross X on the eShop. I liked your tweet where you uh, shared the footage of it. So, right. And I also like Pick Ross, and it definitely made my my ears perk up watching the footage of like, oh, that does look really fun. Yeah. And now hearing you talk about it, it's like, do I want to go through that same thing of like, oh, I could play this RPG or I could play this like really quick and satisfying Pick Ross thing and then yeah. not make progress in my two giant RPGs. <laughs> the, the other funny thing, Marcus, is like that tweet, you, you perfectly encapsulate it because like you were familiar with Pick Ross, so you looked at it and you're like, just seeing like 20 seconds of gameplay, you're like, okay, I see what this is, right? Okay, cool. Yeah, maybe I'd be into this. But like if, you're, if you've never played Pick Ross, it just looks like a foreign language, I think, of just like... <laughs> high speed grid based like pick cross puzzle yeah. solving like if you don't have the basics of how it works you'd probably look at it and be like what is happening here <laughs> why, why is he feeling why is that why is that line of blocks okay but that one isn't what is going on you know i'm start how have we not gotten pick cross 3d round three on switch yet like how has oh, that not man. been a thing because i i still will on occasion fire up my 3ds to play round two like yeah, I, I adore incredible. that game so much, and it's like how have we how are we this deep into the Switch life cycle and have not gotten a new Picross 3D? <laughs> well, there's two answers for that. I'm part of the problem, and that I just keep buying every 2D Picross game that comes out. So it's like we can just keep making these. Kyle keeps buying them. We don't really need to. to go. <laughs> Is the 3D and 2D formulas that different? Yeah, they're pretty. They're yeah. pretty different. Yeah. Um, but the other thing, and Marcus, I don't know if you'll agree with me or not, but like, I feel like 3D Picross is pretty reliant on having like a touchscreen and a stylus. I don't yeah. know how I could play it with a controller. I mean, I guess you could, because I know when on uh, on 3DS you could rotate with the 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 stick. Yeah. If you want to play it that way, but I mean, you want to use the stylus to like yeah. tap to break the squares and stuff like that. Like that tactile like sensation is it, it's really strong and it's it feels so satisfying to break those blocks away and see the shape yeah. underneath. And also, it just works so well. You like hold down a button to rotate and you let go of the button to tap. And like I, I, I'd love to see them try with a controller, but I just in my brain, I don't, I don't know how it would work. But I'd love to be wrong. Technically, you could just do it. I mean, the Switch is a touchscreen, and you can, you know, they don't make a stylus for it, but you, I own a stylus that works 
with the Switch screen that I've used exactly maybe like twice. <laughs> I think there, there was only one game I needed it for. It was like a point and click game I was reviewing for Screen Rant. But yeah, I think if anything, it'll be easier just because there's more buttons and you know, yeah, it's, it's yeah, nicer to hold. But yeah, they that's that's not our problem to figure out, right? Like right, just yeah. <laughs> just give us a, a new Fair Cross 3D. Please. Here's, uh, How about what about Picross 3D VR? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, I would totally be into that. Oh, that that's actually the other thing that I think I'll be playing a lot over the break that I played a lot in the last couple days is um, booted up the the Quest Two and took time to update everything. Uh, yeah. I I love Beat Saber. Like, oh, I play Beat Saber constantly. I I go through these like ebbs and flows where like I'm really into it. I play it every day, and then I don't play it for months, and then I'm really into it, and I play it every day. And I think I'm like getting into one of those everyday moments because they released like a rock pack, and so I was like, they have like Nirvana and uh, like White Stripes on there, and then I download. They had like a Lizzo pack that I downloaded, like the full Lizzo pack, which is like this just great Beat Saber music, and I'm like, I'm finding myself checking in to play a couple songs every day. I I used to be able to play on expert. I've I've lost that skill. I'm back down to hard, like some kind of loser. <laughs> so I gotta get back up there. I've been listening to the uh, Black Panda Wakanda Forever soundtrack a lot lately. Yeah, and I wanna I wanna play that whole thing in Beat Saber. <laughs> I want oh, yeah. to be awesome. Um, yeah. There is a week. The weekend has a song on there that where I think he did from the original Black Panther soundtrack. Uh, so, so there is me. a Black Panther song. Yeah, Pray For Me, I think, is in Beat Saber yeah. now. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. A lot of weird stuff for me. RPGs, Picross, and Beat Saber. Sounds like a good time to me. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, for real. Well, Word, uh, I think mine is, I've kind of talked about it, I've kind of chimed in here and there. I think uh going to be a lot of travel. going to be dealing with family stuff, which has kind of been the routine this past year. Um, and then hopefully playing games. I don't, I'm packing my PS5, which I know is dangerous. That's an undertaking. Yeah, it's it a is. Brick. Normally I, I covered in bubble wrap and put it in my suitcase. And I think I might have bubble wrap in the car, so I might do that again. Uh, but you can always tell on like TSA, like had to open your bag to see like what the hell was inside this bubble wrap. It's like, why are you transporting this abstract art sculpture? <laughs> yeah well now the ps5 has been out so long i feel like they're like oh okay they like, can just see it in the scanner you know you would think but um do you have to take in it, case i do is oh huh? I, I, never mind i guess it's not a carry-on i was thinking do you have to take it out and put it in a little tray for oh a god I, I will never do that with <laughs> PS5. i've done it with the series s i will I never see do that someone bring a ps5 in here <laughs> and then i'm gonna try to hook it up to the little tv in my seat <laughs> <laughs> no no way Oh my god! But I don't know if I'm gonna have a screen like a, a TV in like all the places we're staying. So I don't know. Might be a, a Steam Deck angle there, or I'll just play WoW Dragonflight on my laptop. You in know what's day. nice is when I I traveled for Thanksgiving out of state with family, and you know I took my Switch and I brought my laptop, and then I remembered that Xbox has like the cloud saving and stuff for like. Oh. PC games, and I was like, "Oh, I can keep playing my Game Pass games." I was like, like and then I just downloaded Signalis and and Pentiment and um and Vampire Survivors, and then just you know resumed my save from console. And it's like I know that's been a thing forever, but I never had a reason to do that until now. And are, it just are felt- you talking about like you are you logged in on a on someone else's Xbox? Is that what you're saying? No, I logged in on mine. Because I have a Game Pass account, and like Ultimate, and then just using cloud saves. Like I'm going to download the Windows version of Vampire Survivors and just upload oh, my cloud save. Right. So you know I don't have to actually be at my console. And I was just. You could also do the cloud gaming thing, right? Yeah, if but in, wanted... yeah, I don't use it just because I don't have a. I don't, if, I if you want to dislike either. the game that you're playing, <laughs> like, it's a fun way to do that. But I've never had to work with that. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, it's just like it's a nice. It's nice that Xbox has that option of like I don't have to bring my console. I my laptop is basically the console. You know. Yeah. No, it's awesome. Yeah, it's it's why generally speaking, if, when it comes to like, hey, do you want the PlayStation version or the Xbox version? I generally just go Xbox, just because the cloud save is just easier to manage i mean playstation has cloud saves options but you have to do a lot of babysitting with it you yeah. know plus it's yeah. only one platform 
for right. it. It's not like there's yeah. a, a new handheld that they can transfer to or anything. Totally. Man, what if there was, though? I feel like... I know... I feel like they learned their lesson from the Vita. But, like, there's a part of me that thinks they're going to give it another stab one of these days. I, I still... Just, I mean, look at the market right now. Yeah, especially with the I, Steam know? Deck being with their, like, we can do that. We've we've done two of those before. Let's do a third. Steam Deck, Switch. Isn't Logitech doing one or something like that? They did, yeah, yeah I think. Yeah. yeah. I, I just want, like, a PlayStation 4 portable. Like I think that would that would cover just about everything for me. From PlayStation what I would want. affordable, yeah, they could make it affordable right. too, and then they. Would I was gonna say it. yeah, it won't be PlayStation affordable. <laughs> like I don't, <laughs> I don't want it to be like a different platform, like Vita, right? Like you could jump back and forth between a lot of PS3 and Vita games, but I just want it. I want it like when I turn on my PlayStation Four portable, I just want it to look like the PlayStation Four UI and have all the functions. That's my dream. Like, uh, like you don't want the bubbles? No, I'm good. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man, the bubbles were bad. And then uh, actually uh, across the street from my grandparents' house, like literally half a mile down the road. uh, So I guess not across the street. It's a very large street. It's a half mile long street. It's like a Silent Hill street. Yeah. Across the street is a, a new board game shop that opened up and they sell like Pokemon cards and they sell like they stock like old packs too that are no longer in print. And so I might I walked in there on things like the week of Thanksgiving when I was home and there were people playing like the Digimon card game, like a tournament was happening. I was like, whoa, like you normally only see that for magic, you know? Um I didn't even know there was still Digimon card game. I didn't know that was still supported. Were any of them wearing digivices and or crest? I didn't get a good look because I was I was in a rush. Okay. It, because I would. Yeah. I'd be that. that I should guy. have announced when I walked in. Hello. <laughs> Does anybody here have a Digimon? <laughs> what is it called? A, a digivice. Oh, I knew that. What was the other? Uh, the, crest, the crest. And in like the later, like the second half of that first season, there are like these necklaces that like each of them basically is their traits of like i the leader ty has the crest of courage and then matt has the uh, crest of friendship it's like they're defining does anybody have trait, the crest basically. of friendship please speak yes, up crest of reliability anyone mm, that's fair not me well cool so let's get into listener questions i think yeah we got a few people writing in about their holiday traditions um legend of gamer 102 said since i started education in 2019 i've been lucky enough to have a two-week winter break again. I spend much of it catching up on backlog games and shows. Most of my old holiday traditions are changing as family is aging and moving. So we're working on building new ones with our kids. That's cool. I I feel like Kayla and I, we moved away from home... We moved away a long time ago. Like 2014. And since then, we've been making our own traditions and stuff. So we always do like pajamas on Christmas Eve. Like every year we have like a set of pajamas we open and we don't really do like christmas presents typically uh we'll do like uh sometimes we'll do in recent years we've done where like we have a prompt and we both go to the store with like you know a budget and you have to fill each of us have to fill the same prompt for the other person that's really fun yeah can you give me an example prompt yeah like uh something to keep you warm uh and so we both have to find something to keep each other warm something to give you store credit on the PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> Something to download uh, Signalis on Xbox Game Pass. <laughs> That's cool. Um, I like that. So I yeah, like steal that. That's fun. Yeah, it'll yeah, like something sweet, something you know, and we usually have like eight things or so, five to eight things, and you go through. You just go to one store and you see what you could find. Uh, and I think like last year I cheated. She really wanted like an air fryer for like years. She's been asking for one, so something to keep you warm. I think I was like. Well, it technically heats our kitchen up a little bit, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> so here's an air fryer. But typically, it's like very like small stuff. But that's cool, Legend of Gamer. I hope you have a great holiday. Zachary Pliggy responded saying, I usually get lost in a MMO or multiplayer world. I'm, I'm right there with you. It helps me reset, get over the holiday blues, and enjoy the holidays in-game. Holiday blues? Yeah. Yeah. You sad? Holiday blues. In the holidays? Yeah. Zach? Yeah. That could be a tough time I think, for some I think people. The, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think the holidays can be blues-like, you know? It can be stressful. Um, it can be stressful. Maybe you, you know, a lot of situations where you might feel the holiday I had blues, that last but... year, actually. 
because I was supposed yeah. to go to um, I was supposed to visit family in New Jersey, and then literally the the night before, because I had an early morning flight, I got sick, like really sick suddenly, oh. and I wasn't sure if it was COVID or not, and it was like too late to mm -hmm. get tested, so oh, I had yeah. to like I just I had to not go. I had to refund my flight, so my I was gonna meet my mom, and my stepdad up there, and you know. I wound up just kind of going to their house down south and watching your dogs instead, just as a favor. Uh, and then I got tested and I found out that it wasn't no COVID, just a bad cold, I guess. Mm. Um, yeah. But then it was like, huh, now I have nothing to do for Christmas. So I turned a negative into a positive where I, <laughs> I decided it'd be a good idea to drive to my elementary school that I loved, love this school. And I've always wanted to go in and just sort of walk around, you know, like for nostalgia. <laughs> yeah. Right. Because <laughs> then you hear the, the sirens, you hear the sirens <laughs> as you walk in. <laughs> well, it's always infuriated me. And I understand why, especially in this the school shooter age of like, it's kind of sucks that you can't just visit your school if you They're don't have like a kid here, that goes there. Like, yeah, uh, especially Florida. Yeah. 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 Um, like, of like, hey, can I just walk up and be like, can I get a visitor pass? And they're like, why are you here? Like, I literally just kind of want to walk down the halls and just be like, oh, this is still here. And, you know, because my memory is hazy, and I, but I have fond memories of this place. And so I remembered, I was like, hey, it's Christmas. It's Christmas Day. No one's there. Like, even people that would normally be there when it's closed aren't there. And so I drove there, and I may have hopped the fence and just sort of walked around and took. In <laughs> may have allegedly. broken a window. <laughs> did you I didn't allegedly go, in go inside, or did you just allegedly walk around? Allegedly, I walked around. I didn't go inside because it's one of those. It's an old school. Like it literally has not changed since I was there in like the nineties, uh, which maybe says something about <laughs> our education system. But um, it's one of those schools where like it's like half of it's outdoors. If that makes sense. You know, like you have to That's some walk Florida from like nonsense. different buildings. We don't and stuff. have that going on here. At uh, you got like the, like you might know West, like those cubicles, the portables, the, like yeah. the portable classes are out there. Yeah, um, and I just kind of walked around and just, just alone, conscious of like I had like an alibi ready. Like if I somehow get caught, <laughs> my plan was basically to be like, hey, it's Christmas, <laughs> you should let me off. <laughs> Not much of an alibi, just a, yeah. a plea. More, more of a, yeah, I guess it's more of a plea of like, hey, you know, I just. I'm not here to cause mischief or steal anything. I'm just this idiot that used to go here, and I'm kind of like scratching off a bucket list thing. I'm like, it'd be cool to just do this, and so I, I did it. I didn't. I get love caught. that idea, honestly. Like that. That I just sort of thinking about it now. I'd have to go back to South Carolina, but I'd be like, man, it would be cool to like walk those halls just to because you're so much taller now. It's everything's gonna yeah. feel so small. You know, it'd be cool. I had that thing of like they had the overhead sort of like walkways, and I was like, "Man, I'm almost touching this." Was it always this short? And I was like, "Oh wait, I'm taller now." Obviously, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, I had to do a double take. But I have the pictures on my phone, so I never have to do it again. But I now I have the reminder of like, "Okay, this pl this thing is here." In my mind, I knew it was there. Okay, now I know forever. I went down a slide too. <laughs> I want a Christmas 2022 Marcus vlog of you your junior high. I could trust uh, pass. Yeah. <laughs> Live stream on Twitch. <laughs> that's really funny. I love that. Yeah, that's awesome. Jill wrote in. Jill Grote, the Indian former. Jill Grote wrote. Hey. Jill Grote wrote. As, uh, as for us, um, for our stockings, my husband and I enter a store together, then dash in different directions. The goal is to pick up a certain number of the best possible stuffers and then get to the checkout as quickly as possible without being seen by the other. The result is a ludicrous <laughs> game of sneaking, dodging, and suspicious behavior. It's great, and at the end, we get presents. I uh, The last two stories now, we have Marcus and Jill both like <laughs> like doing these innocuous things that I think are really sweet and, and lovely, but look like criminal acts from the outside <laughs> like, you know <laughs> i was gonna say did, jill and her husband are basically doing the old nickelodeon toy run right? uh, like, yeah. like and i'm totally down for that as someone that always wanted to do that and used to send postcards to be on that thing and never got oh, picked yeah. <laughs> that's funny what happened i want to know what happens if they see each other is, is the game over like if you bump sacrifice. into each other <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> not back to this yeah we need yeah a, we, i don't know we need a follow-up jill yeah what happens if you get caught 
you have to restart the mission. Yeah, the Metal you Gear put music back kicks on the in. Shelves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last question here, or last comment, really. Uh, Mash start button in Discord says, "I'm an anti Christmas Christmas movie kind of guy." I almost exclusively watch atypical Christmas movies around this time of year, beginning with Lethal Weapon on the 1st of December as I set up the tree and Die Hard on Christmas Day. Wait, he said Basically, atypical. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. So it was okay, Lethal Weapon. But in the grand scheme, you ask your grandma what her favorite <laughs> Christmas movie is. She's not going to say Die Hard. Probably. I mean, Depends grandma, on grandma. Be wrong. There's actually, yeah. actually, honest to God, my, my mom's mom, who is my daughter's grandmother, it has been on the Die Hard as a Christmas movie train like way before it was cool and would say that. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and then they finish off saying, uh, basically, any movie set at Christmas counts as a Christmas movie, but I give bonus points for nudity, violence, <laughs> explosions, cussing, <laughs> gunfire, or blood. So, huh. so yeah. <laughs> so, Lethal Weapon, right, is written by Shane Black. Uh, who is a successful writer and director in his own right. Um, and almost all of his movies take place during Christmas. So, oh. like Iron Man 3. L- Iron Man 3, yep. And then um, The Nice Guys was going to be my big mm-hmm. recommendation, which is a fantastic movie written and directed by Shane Black. I haven't Black. seen that. Uh, Ryan Gosling, uh, it's hilarious. It's so funny, The Nice Guys. And it's like a murder mystery Chris- that happens to take place around Christmas. Yeah, Sh- Shane Black has even, he's in interviews and stuff, he's like, which I think is a great point. He's like, I'm writing these movies. If you just make it take place during Christmas, it just adds that extra little wrinkle of interestingness because it's just a different tone. So like Iron Man 3 is a great example. It's like Iron Man 3 didn't really have to take place during Christmas, but the fact that it does just adds this weird ethereal sort of holiday element to it that just improves it. Uh, just like it turns up the volume a little bit. So I yeah, Shane Black. Look up Shane Black movies. I wonder what he thinks huh. of Blue Stinger. Blue Stinger, the Dreamcast game? <laughs> it also took place during uh, Christmas for during Christmas. some reason. Do you guys, on on a, on a similar topic, Nightmare Before Christmas, is that a Halloween movie or is that a Christmas movie? I don't know if I've ever watched it. It's, oh, it's Christmas great. in my house, but not necessarily on purpose. Like We just watch more like traditional horror movies during October. And so Nightmare Before Christmas kind of becomes a December movie. But I think it isn't. I don't know. That's a tough one. I think it is a, a Christmas movie because that's what it's a, about. Like Halloween occurs in the first, I don't know, three minutes and then it's done. And then the movie is about Christmas. So I kind of consider it a Christmas like you movie. You would watch it. My daughter Christmas. had the revelation this year that it's a Thanksgiving movie. <laughs> because it just you can that's the perfect middle place to watch it was was her reasoning which I thought was pretty clever. It's a good compromise. Yeah. yeah, I was wondering like when are you more more likely to watch it either on Halloween or uh, Christmas? Probably Chris. I mean, my fa- I've seen clips of the movie because my family will watch it and I'll like pop in for like two minutes. Mm-hmm. So I've like seen a lot of clips over the years, but I've never actually sat down to watch it myself. But it is always during Christmas that I walk by or. It's you're flipping through and it's on TNT or something. I don't know. Yeah. Do you have any desire to watch it? I'm curious. Not really. It's a great movie. Love yeah. it. Yeah. It has a weird. I feel like I've seen enough chunks of it that I'm like, all right, I get it. I'm good. Yeah. It's, it has this like weird. The dog, right? The, the zombie dog. Yeah. Ghost. Yeah, you nailed it. Ghost dog. <laughs> um... <laughs> but it, it has a weird like hot topic reputation now, right? It's like yeah. got this whole culture. Yeah, I think it. that might be like what turned me yeah. off. It's but like. like if you zoom out, like it's it's John, it's genuinely a fantastic movie with great music. Like there's a yeah. reason it has maintained popularity for all these decades, you know. Yeah. Who's the composer on it? Danny Elfman. Wasn't it Danny Elfman? Yes. Yeah. yeah he just did a concert of it, and Phoebe Bridgers Bridges was <gasps> uh, Wendy, and they like sing together on stage, and it was really cool. Oh. Yeah, that's all cool. right. Well, now I have to watch it. Did cause... they do it for Christmas or Halloween though? Ooh. <laughs> oh, I guess they did it for Christmas because it was like last week, I think. Um, but it was very cool. I think that settles the debate then. I love Phoebe Bridgers. So Kingdom Hearts is a Christmas game. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, Alex, That's you could funny. always just play the first like three Kingdom Hearts games. They all go to <laughs> Nightmare. I, I have. <laughs> I've, I've been to, I've been to that world in, in a Kingdom Hearts. It was Kingdom Hearts two. 
and, the, and one, both I of think, them. Yeah. yeah, one yeah. and one. Yeah. Okay, okay. They go back to that. I've definitely one a lot. been to that world. Yeah, so maybe maybe I've, that's where I've had my fill from is Kingdom Hearts. But uh, I think that's gonna do it for the show this week, the GI Show Holiday Special. Thank you, everybody, for writing in, sharing your stories and your traditions. Also, shout out to Home Alone. I just want to say that before we wrap up. Uh, the best Christmas movie. Is it controversial to say that I think Home Alone 2 is better? Hmm. I, yeah, I really like Lost I think in it the is. I, I love the first one, but I, I'm a sucker. I mean, 2 is really good. I just... I never like, hey, you guys want to watch Home Alone 2? <laughs> It's always like we're flipping the <laughs> channels or like it's already on. It's like, oh, it's Home Alone 2. Let's watch it. I love the hotel. But nobody actively seeks out Home Alone 2. Right. I love the hotel stuff in that movie. Like It is good. I like the Central Park spray. stuff. I think it's also the bird like, lady. Oh, it's yeah, a little tainted lady. now because there's that Trump cameo in it. You yeah. know, they should release like oh, the. Oh, yeah. They should just like release the Trump free edit on Disney Plus or something. It's not a necessary they just scene. Pixelate it's just a his face. <laughs> just, just yeah. cut him out. Yeah. Ugh. All right. Well, that's gonna do it for the show, y'all. Of course, if you enjoyed it uh, and you're sitting around and you have time and you want to help us out, you can go and leave us a review over on Apple Podcasts. Uh, that really helps us out and uh, helps us kind of you know helps our our weight in the algorithm of Apple Podcasts and where we rank and all that fun stuff. Uh, and it also just helps uh, new listeners of the show. You know, they I, I'm a person who reads reviews for a show before I start it, but I know I might be in the minority there. Uh, but we do exist. There's dozens of us, and uh, so we'd love it if you left us a podcast review. Uh, we've got a, we've got Game Informer uh, articles and videos and podcasts all holiday long. So head over to GameInformer.com for all of that. Stay tuned to the first week of January for our... I mean, Wes, you've got Dead Island 2 stuff rolling out um, over the holidays, right? Depending on when this goes up, um, between now and the end of December, we'll have at least four Dead Island 2 features going up. Pretty great ones, in my opinion. And then, yeah, in January, we're going to continue the rollout. Yeah, big rollout in terms of video and podcast. I think we're going to have a... Uh, the, probably the first week back, we'll talk all about Dead Island 2, I think. Um, we we played it for seven hours. And yeah, so look forward to that. Thanks for watching, everybody. Of course, go and follow everybody here. Follow Kyle at Kyle M. Hilliard. Follow Marcus at Marcus Stewart 7 Follow Wes at LeBlanc. Wes, that's L-E-B-L-A-N-C-W-E-S. Uh, and you can follow me at It's Van Aiken. Uh, that'll do it. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.